Hello to the Chicas and the Chicas. Today we are going to revisit the evergreen topic of evaluations and I'm going to talk about a particular mistake that I find a lot of my students and in general many amateur and club level players tend to make. So without further ado let's dive right in and I'm presenting you a um, position from a game from a student who is playing with the black pieces. It's black to move and um, I can give you as much as it's a clearly much better position for black if we play one of the few correct moves here. Student played bishop b7, which to my mind just, yeah, like screams to be not good enough or rather inappropriate slash uh, <coughs> inadequate. What's the problem? First and foremost, um, the bishop is shooting in the back of the knight, which wouldn't be a biggie um, if we had time to move the knight, but it's an easy target for white to play developing moves to hit the bishop. Um, and even queen c1 is actually quite obnoxious here because uh, I have got this cheeky check winning the bishop as well as coming to e3 and target the c5 pawn. White should not have any problems here realistically speaking. And so we spend a fair bit of time on already earlier in the game and here too to some degree on the fact that um, the total no-brainer move for black here was of course knight d4. Put your pieces in the center, goes without saying. Um, it allows black to create a very dominant situation in the center where this knight is challenging every white piece, but capture seems to be just so ridiculously unpleasant to do for white because it unites the black pawns and now I have got an e5 then a bishop on b7 f5 I'm sweeping white off in the center with the two bishops slicing dicing no chance whatsoever on your bike but because of he had missed knight d4 already multiple times in the game I didn't want to pound this knight d4 knight d4 all over again and then I had a look and I'm like, buddy, why didn't you play here e5 then? And I already knew the answer before I even asked the question. So that's how YouTube videos are made, by the way. This is the secret that sometimes I ask a question and I already know that A, what the answer is going to be and B, how that could be a very educational um, scenario for those of you who are here to watch. So, of course, the answer was, ah, it makes my bishop on g7 so bad. And that friends, is exactly the phenomenon that I would like to you to try to avoid at all cost whenever possible. Because what is taking place here, or rather in the student's head, is, is that we evaluate the position on one single factor. And whilst it does happen in chess quite a bit that a single factor can be dominant enough in a position that that allows you to draw a conclusion. Generally speaking, in dynamic positions where the pawn structure is relatively mobile, or I should rather say not completely rigid, it's extremely unusual that you get to single out a factor and evaluate a position correctly on that one factor. Because he claiming that the bishop on bad is g7 is like, well, is it really? Like, fine, it's shooting in the back of the pawn, but the pawn is not glued to e5. And secondly, and I really think that this is a powerful message too, by the way, if you have the pleasure of having the bishop pair and you don't have a pawn structure where the center is completely stripped of pawns, almost inevitably, one of your bishops will be not that great. But that doesn't devalue the bishop pair or even that bishop. It just means that currently it's not the pride of the army. But that doesn't make the whole army and our position bad, which was well, basically the conclusion that, okay, bad bishop, I don't want to do this. Because once you look deeper, you go like, hang on a second, I have a knight coming to d4, I have a, knight, a bishop coming to b7. How am I not completely winning here? In fact, this, powerful, this idea is so powerful, I tried to analyze knight g3, trying to pile up some pressure on the e5 pawn. But um, quite incredibly, after knight d4, rook e1... Did I look at rook e1? Yeah, I did. Not, rook e8, knight e4. I have here bishop b7. 
And that is exactly my point. G7 bishop, well, not exactly the best. How about my B7 bishop though? And I couldn't have the same story without E5 because I needed sufficient backing. I needed to dodge the uh, trade. And by the way, why ever not would I want to have the pawn on E5 when it means I can later on go for F5 and then E4 and just go, go, go because you need to be in the center. By the way, C5 is not hanging in case you were wondering because of <coughs> the dire consequences after knight takes, um, pawn takes and then... Queen g5 and bishop takes f3 perhaps is winning as well. Whereas if they take on d4, then of course we take back with the pawn, which to some might look like, oh, that made the bishop even worse. Yeah, but this one is winning the game. And once again, f5, e4, quite likely is going to break this diagonal uh, open. And so to not play e5 here on account of, ooh, that makes my bishop bad on g7 is just... Um, yeah, it's just not sufficient enough. Um, we are evaluating an entire uh, micro, or well, rather a cosmos, on account of a tiny atom. It's like there is so much more going on here that we need to take into account when evaluating the position. So please try your best to not to find one single factor. And by the way, almost always, and this is also something that I find so interesting in my coaching career when you find th that your students find the one pointer and they use that as an evaluation it almost always is a negative hardly ever do you see someone going like and i went for this because that bishop is amazing that hardly ever happens right but the opposite i didn't do that because of that bishop was bad is actually uh, the general uh, way of how the amateur mind seems to work. I'll show you another example. This one, <laughs> yeah, nearly made me fall off my chair when I saw this one. I don't recall the position 100% correctly, so please excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> excuse me for that too. So this is the position with why to move. We are slicing and dicing and murdering here the Black King. And my student here played... Um, I think it was bishop c5, which is a very clever tactical idea, which unfortunately doesn't quite work, by the way. And I'm like, mate, didn't you have queen takes here, king d7 and queen b7 and mop up? And he goes, no, no, because then queen takes f3 and then the rook is hanging with check. And I'm like, okay, so? And he goes like, I didn't like it. And I'm like, what? I, I, I was absolutely flabbergasted and speechless by the reasoning here that after queen a8, king d7, queen b7, queen f3, and we don't like it, yeah, we, we reject this position, period, because the rook is hanging with check. And I'm like, okay, so what if we move it, creating an unstoppable game-winning threat? <laughs> it's like... What? By the way, in general, we should never, ever stop a line where something is hanging with check. That's actually your number one incentive that you can't call that off there. It's like finishing a movie halfway through with a cliffhanger when very clearly the narrative normally would go on and there will be a conclusion. It's like, no, we can't do that. And after rook d1, by the way, for those of you who really like numeric evaluations, it's plus eight and a half. Yep, and we said no to that and favored a triple zero. But at least f3 is now not hanging because the queen is covering it. Now, I don't mean to ridicule the student, the, the move, the thinking, but I do mean to use this as a teaching opportunity to advise against this tunnel vision where you look at one thing in the position and then you fabricate a whole entire story and ultimately an evaluation around that one little thing and completely refusing to think globally about what's going on in our position. And by the way, I mean, yeah, this this is a really, really delicious line, by the way, this rook d6 idea 
is is a sight to behold and yeah it's ridiculously difficult to stop additionally unfortunately the much more mundane rook d5 cutting the queen off from the c6 knight is also completely winning so friends that's gonna be it for today once again please please try to avoid making this very commonly occurring mistake and trust me you are going to be a much better calculator and evaluator if you refrain from committing this erroneous way of thinking thank you very much for choosing me today and watching this video please leave a comment down below smack the like button super thank me if you can and stay tuned for the next video bye